And so a great big welcome to you as we gather on this, the second Sunday of Lent, as we continue with the Lord in his journey to the cross. And a very big welcome to all of you. We're glad to have you on board. I know some of you are at home, in your bathroom, sipping your coffee, and some will be in the church. But as we know, together we are God's church. And so uh, welcome aboard. Uh, the lesson today is uh, being that it is Lent, it deals with uh, the denying of oneself. Jesus said to take up a cross and to follow him. That being the disciples of of, of our Lord, um, it, uh, it involves our uh, lives uh, being his hands and his feet in whatever way that may take for each of us. I know many of you already are uh, rolling up your sleeves and getting out there and doing the work of, of, of God, and I'm so grateful for that. But I think uh, this um, um, Lenten season challenges us to uh, to pray and meditate and and to seek what God would have us to do um, uh, during this uh, this holy time. Uh, how can we better serve our Lord, and how can we better be those those uh, disciples uh, of of our Lord in in all that we say and do? Uh, I'm sure it's different for everyone. I can't tell you how you're to live out your Lenten journey as we uh, as you practice. Uh, as you grow, as you learn to be that uh, that um, a person of Christ that uh, we're called to be, um, but I know to be the hands and the feet of the Lord means that uh, we're we're uh, we're doing, not just sitting. We're out there caring, uh, calling, um, doing, sending out emails, uh, making visits, um, uh, inviting folks. Uh, lots of people out there are, are really. Um, how would you say? A lot of folks are trying to find meaning in their lives, and uh, and uh, God may want to use you and use each of us to help them to find that meaning that would be so important to give them that purpose for them. So, um, so as we remind as a reminder of our Lord to um, uh, to take up our cross and to follow uh, follow Him this uh, this uh, second Sunday of Lent, I um, seek uh, and pray about what God would have you to do. Um, I'm just grateful for each of you, and so thankful uh, that that together we can uh, be that community of faith um, in all that we say and do. With that said, let me begin the service now. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And I continue with the prayer of the day. Oh God, by the passion of your blessed Son, you turned an instrument of shameful death into the means of life. Help us to live in ongoing gratitude for your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. And all God's people said, Amen. God bless you. Glad to have you with us. And now I turn the service over to our music team as they share their gifts of music. Let the rain of your presence fall on me. Our gospel Gosh, lesson for this, the second Sunday of Lent, is from the eighth chapter of the Gospel of Mark, beginning in verse 31. And Jesus began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter, and he said, Get behind me, Satan. 
for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples, and he said to them, If any want to deny, become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. Those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. The Gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. So grace and peace to you from God our Father, Father and from the Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. And so let us pray. Lord, we thank you again as we gather as your people this Lenten season. O oh Lord, as we journey with you to the foot of the cross, come, O oh Lord. Come and be our strength, our life, our support. Lord, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleased in your sight. And this I pray. Amen. I came across this quote some time ago. It's a quote that rings so true. The quote that says that true peace, that high and abiding peace that passes all understanding, is to be had not in retreat from battle, but only in the thick of battle. I don't know about you, but I'm not so sure I am wanting to always be in the thick of battle. Are you? What I do know is that it sure is tempting to spend one's life in retreat. Is it not? I have to say I love it when my family and I are able to get away for a few days. It is like a mini retreat for us, and they are wonderful. You know, one has to come back down from the mountain to the real life, doesn't it? And yes, it's tempting to spend one's life in retreat. It sure can be depressing <laughs> to come back to reality. But you and I know that as wonderful as it may be to live a life in retreat, we have so much to do in our daily lives, be it at work, at home, looking out after our families. Yes, I know it's easy. I know it's most tempting to retreat behind the wall of our personal responsibilities and to ignore the needs of our friends or our community or our world. Then we come to today's gospel lesson, where Jesus says to us, If any wish to come after me, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it. Those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. Take up their cross. Hmm. I think the members of the early church knew exactly what Jesus was saying here. You see, they had seen his example. He literally took up a cross and he bore it to the hill on Calvary. He had willingly chosen to subjugate his will to the will of his Heavenly Father. He did what he had to do, and he did it not for his own gain, but he did it for others. He did it for you, he did it for me. And yet I have to say, no concept has been as corrupted in the common vernacular as this one, when we say bearing a cross. People say, oh, I've got arthritis, and that's just my cross to bear. Or I've got a lazy husband, but that's just my cross to bear. I think you and I know such problems have nothing, absolutely nothing to do with Jesus' words. When you bear Jesus' cross, you're saying something entirely different. You're saying that you're willing to serve God. You're willing to serve others. You're willing to put aside selfish concerns and to focus your attention on God's kingdom. If that costs you money, if it costs you some of your precious time, if you have to get out of your comfort zone, then that is just what you have to do. When you bear a cross, God's will comes first in your life. Is that where you and I are at today? Does that accurately describe our lives during this season of Lent? There are a couple of things we need to make note of. First of all, I have to say that without the gospel, it makes no sense to take up a cross. And let's admit it. Why not eat, drink, and be merry and ignore our responsibilities? If there's no gospel, there's no good news from God. There are many people who live only for themselves and the people they love. Maybe you know some of them, and they're not bad or evil people. Some of them have perfect attendance in church. They're, they're not bad, they're just selfish people. Some of them are quite attractive, and they live in beautiful homes. And they drive nice cars, and they're well-educated. They never knowingly have broken the law. The only problem with them is that they haven't a clue. Haven't a clue what Jesus meant when he said that if anyone had to take up 
would come after me, they must deny themselves and take up the cross and follow me. But like Lucy in that old Phoenix, uh, Peanuts comic strip, where Lucy's swinging on the playground, and Charlie Brown reads to her, he says, it says here that the world revolves around the sun once a year. Lucy stops abruptly and responds, the world revolves around the sun, are you sure? I thought it revolved around me. <laughs> Few people are as candid as Lucy, but believe me, they make the same mistake. They really do believe that the world revolves around them and their needs. That's the philosophy that guides many people. So look out for number one. I got mine. Now you get yours. And that's not really all that bad, I guess, unless you believe in Jesus Christ. You see, if we're merely creatures of the dust, here today and gone tomorrow, what does it matter then what we do with our lives? It matters little how we treat our neighbor, whether we're generous with our church or whether we seek justice for our people. You see, without the gospel, it makes no sense to take up a cross. But if we believe in the gospel, however, there is no escape from taking, out a, uh, taking up a cross. And that's what following Jesus is all about. It's about living the Christ life in the world, eating a friend's call for help, looking for ways to improve the community, joining with others through your church, our church, to support uh, various missions and ministries, being sensitive to those with special needs, inviting a friend to join you in worship or Bible study, doing all those things that take us out of our comfort zone, our preoccupation with ourselves and those we love, and focusing on the call of God to be in service to others. And yes, I know that many of you, are, you're already doing that. You're out there. You're rolling up your sleeves, helping and serving in so many and varied ways. And as your pastor, I want to, I want you to know how I'm tremendously grateful for you. You who freely give of your time, your talents, and your resources for assorted numbers of ministries and services within this church and within our community and city. I know Pastor Jim's not standing in front of you, screaming at you, threatening you with an inch of your life to do such and such. Instead, I see many of you giving of yourselves so freely and so cheerfully. And as I said, I truly am grateful to God for you. For you see, if we truly believe the gospel, there is no escape from taking up a cross. Will we be inconvenienced? Probably. Will it cost us money? Undoubtedly. It may even cost us much more. It may cost us our life. As I've heard it stated by others, if you want to follow Jesus, you'd better look good on wood. <laughs> that we too, as the Apostle Paul reminds us, are called to be crucified with Christ, so that it's no longer I who lives, but Christ who lives within me. And so let me ask you, do you believe that you were created for a purpose? That our lives are not just some cosmic accident? Just how much do you believe it? No, I'm not talking about earning our salvation. We already are members of the body of Christ. We don't have to worry about being accepted by God. Christ has already taken care of that. But wouldn't it be grand to stand before God someday, be able to say that Christ's death was wasted on me? To say I did my part? I got out of my comfort zone. I gave up my time. I gave up my time and my talents and my treasures. And that I shared the words and the works of the kingdom. That I bore my cross in serving my Lord and his church. All I know is that bearing a cross makes no sense without the good news of Jesus Christ. If you believe the gospel, however, bearing a cross is what you and I must do. Or as our dear friend Martin Luther or Uncle Marty, as I call him, would so well say, his quote was, I can do no other. So if any wish to come after me, let them deny themselves and take up the cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it. Those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. And I pray it be so. And all God's people said, Amen. You are my strength when I am weak. You are the treasure that I seek.
Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. I believe that you are truly present in the sacrament of Holy Communion. Lord, I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you in the sacrament of your body and blood, come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, and let me never be separated from you. O Lord, may I live in you, and you in me, in this life, and in the life to come. And all God's people said, Amen. And so again, we want to thank you for joining us this day. We hope this service today has been helpful in your Christian journey. Please know our love and prayers are with each and every one of you. And again, if we can ever be of any help, uh, do, do not hesitate to call us or email us at the church office. And so receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And all God's people said, Amen.